Grace and peace, everyone, and happy Easter. We are so happy that you are here with us early this morning. It's Easter morning, 2020, April 12th, and we are here for the sunrise service. We are here to witness to the resurrection of our Lord. He is risen, hallelujah. I hope today that through this brief service in our beautiful memorial garden here at Reddington Reform, that you will be able to meditate upon Christ's true presence and risen presence in your life. My name is Liz Estes. I'm the pastor of Reddington Reformed. I'm here with my husband, Mark. And Happy with, Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> and with our dear friend, Reverend Dave Taylor. Good morning. And now we will begin our worship with a call to worship. This is from Hosea, chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. Grace and peace to everyone. Dave Taylor, would you lead us in a prayer? I'm reading a portion of Psalm 16. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you did not give me up to Sheol, nor let your faithful one see corruption. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Okay. So now let us pray for illumination on God's word. Holy gracious spirit, be with us in the garden as Jesus found his disciples in the garden. We ask you, Lord, to let us feel your gracious Holy Spirit and illumine for us the words of your Holy Scripture. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Now hear the good news from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus had been, 
one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Trauma is the only word to describe what the disciples and those people that follow Jesus from Galilee had experienced. They remember the words that Jesus had told them Thursday evening at dinner, at that supper, their last supper, Jesus had lectured them extensively on what was about to happen. But most significantly, what they thought was his saying to them that, listen, because I live, you will live also. So they must have thought, well, we know that the temple guards are mad, the Pharisees are conspiring, there's trouble, but it's going to be okay. So they went out to Gethsemane with him, and that's when the trauma started. It was awful. They fled, they were locked away in a room, they were in hiding, basically. John was with the Blessed Mother and other women were at the cross that awful day. We've reviewed, of course, all of this on Thursday and Friday in our services and our readings. But it finally was over and humanity had done its ultimate worst. And now God would do God's very best. But they didn't know that. They were still in hiding. So Mary gets up and she's coming to the tomb. She thought he would be there. Arimathea, Nicodemus, everybody thought he would be there. They were preparing grave, grave clothing and, and the spices and things, all of the burial procedures. They thought he would be there. God would do God's very, very best. And what is it? It is a vindication. The resurrection is a vindication. Not for Jesus' sake, not for himself. I've often asked people to, to ask yourself, if, if you did so much good in the world, if you helped so many people, and the world treated you like it did, would you come back? Would you want to come back? Not me. Not me. I, I say that's the end of it. No, no, no. The resurrection, beloved, is for us. It is for his people. It is for us. It is a vindication. Now, Mary had come there, and it dawned on me the other day that Mary, I think, was performing part of the ancient uh, mourning rites because another Mary of 10 days or so before did the same thing. Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Uh, Jesus was coming, Martha found out, Martha went out to meet him, and Mary, the, the text says, ran out of the house, and the people thought she was going to the tomb to mourn there. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, going to the tomb. Now this morning, Mary Magdalene is going to another tomb. She's doing the same thing. But she will witness 
God's very best. He is not here, she is told. He is risen. And it's a vindication on two levels. Jesus had said to his men, because I live, you will live also. And now it's so. This is what it means. All who believe him from that day to this are going to live right through death. King David said this in the great 23rd Psalm. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's going to walk through it. He's not going to stay there. You and I will live right through death because he lived. I do hope today we sing that magnificent Jader song, Because He Lived. That is why we will live. But secondly, there is something more important here. The prophet Ezekiel will speak about it. He will say in chapter 18 of that great prophet, I love the prophets of the exile and the post-exilic guys because everything they say looks forward. Everything up to that point is over. All the things that Isaiah worried about, all the things that Jeremiah railed about have happened. It's over. Now we have something else coming along. And Ezekiel will outline, he'll say, listen, the sins of the Father stay with the Father. The sins of the Son on the Son, all souls are mine. The soul that sins shall die. Now, Jesus is fulfilling a wonderful prophecy of Isaiah. It's in chapter 25. Paul will mention it in the service this morning. Death is swallowed up in victory. And that is best illustrated, beloved, by a simple syllogistic piece of logic. It is the sin that caused the death. If the death is swallowed up, the sin that caused it is nullified. And the resurrection is that vindication of the facts that God is satisfied with the sacrifice of his only son who he has sent into the world because he loves the world, that he sent him, that whoever believes in will have life eternal. The resurrection is the proof of that. The soul that sins will die. The death is swallowed up. The sin that caused it is gone as well. You can rejoice in that this morning, beloved. All praise to him who has loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us a part of the kingdom of his God and our God, his Father and our Father. Join your hearts with me in a word of prayer. Holy Father, it is just that. It is a wonderful day. We thank you, Lord God, your Son has the victory. He is the propitiation. You are expiated. Sin is canceled. Life forevermore for all who believe. All praise and thanksgiving to you, Father. We commend ourselves to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will read a short litany of the resurrection. There was darkness over the earth before creation. There is darkness in the womb before birth. The seed grows in darkness before it meets the light. There is darkness in the tomb before resurrection. But now Christ is risen. The dawn has come. A new creation has commenced. The world is born anew. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Amen. Alleluia. Praise God. Beloved, go now as God's chosen witnesses to testify that Christ indeed has been raised and we are raised with him. Set your minds on the things of God and do not be afraid, for your life is safe with Christ in God. And may God raise you from all that would entomb you. May Christ Jesus be your life and may the Holy Spirit empower you for all that is good. Amen. 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 Friends, 
I hope you will join us again at 10 o'clock. We have a beautiful service ready for you. We'll be on YouTube. And um, if you are signed in and subscribe to our channel, you can participate in our prayers that we'll hold in the chat group. So I hope we can see you there. Grace and peace and have a beautiful Easter day.